Tiwari, you're a veteran Congress leader, and the moment you see Congress party seems to be racked with dissidents, whether you see Gujarat, you see Bihar, what do you think is the future of the Congress? Well, Congress, as you know, is one of the most experienced and old political parties of the world. Now, having a 104 years old history. And the Congress image and the history of the Congress, the role played by the Congress in the freedom struggle, not only for India, for, but for all countries which are under the yoke of colonialism, that is very well known. I have been associated with the Congress movement in one way or the other since 1939. As a student, I have seen this. Uh, what do you call dissidence has been there, more or less, I think always, even during pre-independence days, we had, you know, so many aspirants for tickets. More or less, when you are mentioning dissidence in the states now, it is, uh, you know, when many people who are able, who think they are able, they can represent their people, they have a legitimate uh, demand for tickets. You know, but it's also been seen that this dissidence increases as the high command leadership seems to weaken. Well, uh, uh, as I said that I have seen this happening through five decades. No, so do you think that at the present moment the Congress High Command is not offering the kind of strong leadership that is no, required, I, I, that is perceived as a weak no, leadership? No, High Command is always a High Command. Always High Command is always High Command. You, I have always seen this sort of phenomena earlier also. This is nothing new to Congress. It is nothing new to not only to Congress, but I think in parliamentary democracy. I think unless or until we reach those stable uh, situations of the type we find in some of the uh, these parties like you know in Britain uh, which have a, who have uh, which have a history of hundreds of years uh, and even here I think the stability that we have in the Congress and by and large Congress workers follow the ticket you know but there is what I think that um, the Congress has a great future the people of India by and large their hearts are with the Congress uh, they might be angry on Mr. Tiwari or, uh, or any, but they are basically, they want this, uh, this uh, sort of, uh, a, the democratic mainstream of the Congress to remain in the body politic of the country. You, don't you have seen the resurgence of the Congress in the South, where they were telling us, uh, I was an observer in Andhra and Karnataka, they were telling me, telling us that, oh, Congress is finished. Now, there is a resurgence. It is the people's, basically, they want Congress. Congress ideology, the basic uh, mainstream of the Congress, secularism, democracy, a you sort know, of Gandhian there, socialism, there is, people would like this. But there is a perception that this particular, you know, Gandhian socialism that you're talking about, that seems to be an outdated sort of a mode as far as present Congress is concerned. That the con present Congress is more concerned with the computer boys, who seems to be out, in touch, out of touch with the rural India, with the real... Well, I think what, uh, what you are, what, uh, is what you are uh, talking about, it is... Of course, the many people air this sort of, uh, you know, stipul they stipulate this sort of situation. But this is a computer age. This is the age of now in many countries, it is a micro computers, mini computers. And, you know, uh, miniaturization is going on in the field of electronics. So you have to apply the uh, Gandhian socialism under current circumstances. You know, you have, have to have a, you, are, you have a place for the charkha also. And you have a place for the uh, most uh, the automated uh, textile plant also. So we have reached a stage of development in which the charkha and the automated uh, textile plant, the computer and the handwritten uh, uh, paper, the computerized paper and the handwritten paper, they have to exist together, which coexist. Means, which, which brings me to the next question because there is also allegations mm -hmm. that along with this con, you know, the computers, there seems to be a, the old guards seem to be making a comeback. That somehow you see it in Bihar, you see it in Madhya Pradesh, mm -hmm. that it is, you know, those who were for a while discarded in 1985 when Rajiv Gandhi came, he in fact had his famous speech in the centenary, uh, you know, session of the Congress I against the power brokers mm -hmm. and it seems almost as if the power brokers are making a comeback. Would you agree with this assessment? Well, uh, I would not agree with the assessment in the, sh in the words, you know, in the way you are putting it. You know, always in a movement like Congress, you have to have an admixture, political admixture of the old guard and the young guard. Uh, you cannot always say that everybody old only should be there. 
and you cannot say that only everybody young should be there. It has to be an admixture of political because, you know, somebody, talent. Somebody like Amla Pati Tripathi. Somebody you know, is a good parliamentarian, somebody is a good administrator, somebody is a good you know, articulate orator, no, like articulate but facts. We, we were talking to somebody like Mr. Kamla Pati Tripathi, a veteran leader. Mm. Now he says that all novices who have no parliamentary experience, who have no experience with political parties, they have hijacked the Congress. Well, it is up to Panditji to say you know, he is a veteran. I, I do not know what exactly he said, so I would not like. Well, to I'm quoting you. What he because said. I would not like to go in argument with him. No, but would you agree with this the assessment? National that, television. That, no, would you agree with this assessment? I would. That, no, uh, no. I would have my own assessment. What is your assessment? Uh, that my assessment uh, regarding what? Th that whether that's young people who have no political background have hijacked the Congress party. Well, well, well. I, I would not use that phraseology. I think the peop the Congress uh, of the future, would belong to the young of today. So you have to prepare a cadre of people who would be t uh, running the Congress in the uh, 21st century, during the earlier years, and this, this is the last decade of the 20th century. So it has always to be an amalgam of the old guard and the young guard and the middle-aged guard, middle-aged middle veterans, they are also veterans. So you, it has been like that also, you know, during uh, the days of Netaji Shubhashchan Bose. They used to tell the Netaji represents the young people, Jawaharlal Nehru represents the young people, and Mahatma Gandhi, the uh, older people. Even days of Mahatma Gandhi, it, they said that they, they were saying the Tilak Lokman, the Tilak uh, led the old guard, and yes. Mahatma Gandhi, the younger generation. No, when you so this the, sort of thing has always been there. But when you we should not be. We should see the picture as a whole. We should not take it, you know, that uh, the left versus the right. The old guard versus well, the young well, guard. Uh, there's another allegation. I mean, somebody like Mr. Casey Pan, for instance, you know, he said that the party voices have taken over. In fact, he mentioned you that you know that, that you people are controlling the Congress and that it's no longer belonging to a democratic sort of a thing. There has been no organizational elections. I do not think he mentioned me personally. No, but uh, he implied. He implied, <laughs> I, but I, I would not like to. Uh, would you say think that enter the, into any argument? No, without that, yes. getting an argument, would you think that there is a certain thing like party bosses have sort of now asserting their strength? Oh, well, uh, I would not like to use the word boss. Party strongmen. No, strongmen. Now, if, if if after fifty years of being active in politics, uh, I and in parties like the Congress, you know, bossism won't pay, and I have at least that common sense. That bossism won't pay. People won't like bossism. In any party, they won't like, and especially in a democratic party like the Congress. You know, there is also a feeling that if the Congress had done very well in the North, especially in UP, uh, you know, person like you would have unfurled the banner of revolt against Rajiv Gandhi. I do not. Uh, I do not like to say. You know, why should I have raised any banner of revolt within the Congress? Why? Because Rajiv Gandhi's leadership is seen as weak and therefore he should be replaced and that you would they be They say that, uh, I, well I have heard other arguments also that his leadership has been very strong. But he was but not uh, been able to deliver too many states till the, you know, till the recent election. Well I think we have to take democracy in its stride. If we have lost the elections uh, in, in some states, or in, in the Lok Sabha, well uh, we have to accept it as uh, being good Democrats. We should not be complaining and nagging and all that. We should bow before the people's mandate. That is democracy. In uh, England, in so many countries, democratic parties are defeated. And uh, they, you know, uh, gladly accept the people's but mandate. With that we are doing here. Why should we be perturbed about it? But they also changed the leader because they feel the leader has not been able to deliver the goods. I mean, well, Edward Heath was replaced. Winston, for instance, in the Labour Party in England, Michael Foote was replaced when he couldn't win the election. I am sure you are not conversing for uh, No, but <laughs> I am asking you, but should Rajiv Gandhi be replaced? Well, uh, that, that's, um, uh, that's, uh, I do not think that is, uh, this uh, question arises. You think he's still the leader of the Congress? He continues to be the leader, that is a fact. You think he should be one man, one post? Well, well, that's... Um, uh, why should I uh, say this no. or why should I deny this? It is up to the party to decide if they want uh, uh, him to be the, continue as the leader of the organization. What is your opinion? Well, my opinion, I will. Uh, I have already expressed that it is up to the party to d decide it. They have already elected him his, uh, as their leader and he is the leader. And you don't think there's any challenge to his leadership in the near future? I do not think that there is any necessity of any challenge. This is the time when all congressmen should unite under the tricolor.
And whatever we have to say, we will say within the organization. What do you think is going to happen to Congress in the opposition? You know, the congressman is seen as somebody who does not like well, to be out should, of power. Well, we should oppose. Uh, uh, we should oppose in a democratic manner. We are a parliamentary democracy. The opposition has also, you know, opposition in a democracy is one face of the coin. The democracy is always two faces: an opposition and the ruling party. Opposition today can become the ruling party tomorrow, as it has now. And uh, again, the opposition has to try, uh, uh, try to become the ruling party.